Hi, I'm Daniel Mettler from Tusic Internet Solutions and in this short video within the next 99 seconds I want to show you how to create a custom font icon library to use on websites. So here goes. Um, so we're going to make a live demo and we're going to start on Fontello. So this is more or less the platform we've been using successfully for quite a while and the way it works is fairly simple. I can give it a font name and I'm going to call this icon XYZ. This is the font name like you know Roboto or Arial or something. And I'm also going to say that my prefix is going to be icon XYZ just for using in CSS styling. And now I could like to say I'd like the heart, I'd like the can, I would like the light bulb, and of course I would like the sunshine and all these very important icons. And now I can just download it and I will now receive a zip which contains everything we need. It has font files which are super tiny because it just contains the icons we just have. It contains a CSS package with various things, for example, the animations, the simple codes, and everything with the font file. And there's even an embedded version which does not even need the font files anymore to work. So that was the entire thing in 99 seconds. And now we're going to look at some more advanced use cases because this is what we just created. As I said, super tiny font files, all the formats, and all the CSS versions. Now, let's look at some more advanced cases now that our 99 seconds are over. So what's the idea? First of all, I want to make sure you understand why we would even need custom libraries. Uh, I want to make sure that you know how to integrate it with DNN and um, how to upload it and things like that. And then I'd like to look at some advanced cases. For example, once you've made the library and a few months later you're going to add some icons, how do you handle that? And of course, naming conflicts. So let's look into that too. So basically, everybody that used icon fonts kind of know that, that they're really great. Um, for anybody that has not tried it, if you need a lot of icons, you need to be able to color them differently and all that. You could technically use GIFs and JPEGs, but it gets a little nasty. And you could use libraries, but they tend to be too large. And you very often run into the problem that you have a, a library with 2,000 icons and you still can't find exactly the one that you need. For example, um, in Too Sexy, there's a, an icon with a ghost picture on it we needed that to explain that some um, content types are shadows or ghosts of a different content type but there was just no such icon in any normal library and that's a very common scenario so let's look at it standard libraries usually are missing some icons we just need um, very large libraries are better but they're large and very often we just need two to three icons um, so for example on too sexy when we have the in page editing let me just give you a quick show of that if I go to uh, to sexy website and um, imagine if to provide these few buttons I would have to include a huge library with all kinds of uh, buttons in them I mean all I need is like 20 buttons and this fits into a super small 10k font library but I don't want to download a 300k library just to provide these buttons so that's a cool optimization uh, again, we also need illustrations. Um, very often we need corporate logos and things like that. And sometimes also um, corporate ID is going to say, well, these are the 27 approved icons that you should use and nothing else. And the editor will never handle that properly if he gets a 2000 picture library. He will always end up using one that he should not have. And this helps. And last but not least, when we're using icon libraries, um, there's always a need for giving them proper names. So if I'm searching for something, so let me just quickly give you a demo here. Um, uh, we created a small page for ourselves to do some uh, special handling here. And let's say if I have, in this case I'm using Font Awesome, and I would like to look for something, and I'm going to look for an arrow. Um, these names here are predefined, and if I would need, need to give them in a different language, or if I'd need to add more keywords, then I would like to be able to rename them as well. So these are just some brief examples. More or less, you're not going to get past this. You will need custom libraries. So what we want to do is we want to create known one. You just saw how that works. And we want to be able to maintain it as well. And we want to be able to integrate it into an app. Um, I'd like to give you a short demo of that, just so you know how this works. Um, Basically, you just saw how it works as a user. I can just search for an icon. I can then say this is the icon I would like. And this is very simple. Now, including it in the app is 
a little bit more difficult, but it's not a big deal. So let me just quickly go into my demo section here. Um, we created a demo app which contains exactly this kind of setup for you to download and just try it. So I'm not going to go through the steps of setting it up. There's a very good blog post about that on the Too Sexy blog. Um, but I would like to just show you how the files are managed this way. So here I have a tutorial app for um, Let me just refresh that too. A tutorial app where I included some custom font icons that I just made. This is just so you can understand how the entire setup can work. Um, if we look at this use case, we have the custom icons. I have a folder here called dist for distribution. And here's a folder where my custom icons are in it. I also have another example using font awesome. And more or less what I just did is I copied the Fontello package into here and it just works. Very, very simple, very trivial. And if you have different files here, this is the standard one, which just says this is the font file in different versions for Internet Explorer, Firefox, etc. And these are all the icon codes. I'll just click on this so that you can get a look at it. See, it just says these are the font files and these are all the icon codes that I have. Um, this is the basic definition and here's the icon codes. So very simple. There is also an embedded version. This one's pretty funky. It actually contains the bytes and bits of the font itself for including. So that's kind of cool. Um, but in most cases, you're going to stick to the fonts. And there's some backward compatible i7 stuff, which you probably do not want. OK. So this is where we put it. And then all we have to do in our setup here is to tell the app where this is located and this is done in the data management so here's the one that I'm using with the custom font icons I have an icon field here and all I have to do it is tell it where the CSS file is located to point to these files um, it's in the app path etc and I have to tell it what the prefix is because there's a JavaScript which will search all the CSS classes for this prefix to then provide the preview for searching. So if I do all that, it's not such a big deal. Uh, here's the one with the custom icons. Now as an editor, I will see the icon. Whoop, that was a bit too fast. So I can pick an icon here. And of course I can search and say, just give me the star icons. So it's very simple to integrate. And if you didn't get something because it was too fast, please read the blog and just try it yourself. Download the demo app. So let's update a library because that's not clearly straightforward. As we just saw is I just downloaded something and of course I could continue and say I need two more and I can download it again. Now the question is what happens if I want to add an icon in three months time or I want to add a special icon from a different icon font? Well, the way it works is like this. Let me just quickly set up this scenario. I'm going to download this again. And this is now located in my downloads folder. So here we go. I'm going to unpack that just so you see what it's like. So this is this Fontello 6a folder. And you see I have a lot of stuff. And maybe now I would like to edit a previously made font file. But how do I get back to that? Because there's no please upload or something here, old configuration, but actually there is. So this is my 6a package, the one I just downloaded right now. And I'm going to go to the, my DF package. This is one I created a few hours ago. And in here you see again, I have the fonts, I have the CSS, but the really cool thing is this config JSON contains everything I need. If I draw this into here, just onto Fontello, Fontello is going to reload a previous configuration I made. You can also see I have a different font name. Um, by coincidence, I have the same CSS prefix, but I can now just continue and add two or three more icons, download it again, and I just have an updated version of my icons. So this is very, very cool and very efficient. It's not completely automated. There's ways to do that too, but I always need a picker to kind of choose which icons I want to add. I would also like to show you how to customize the names of my icons because let's assume I would be doing this in German and I would like to give this thing German names then I could just go add 
German names and this would assist my users in searching. Okay, so this is a fairly useful feature. It's also great because sometimes you'll have an icon which technically is a, let's say, a, um, in here it may be called a download icon, right, like this one. And maybe I want to actually call it the install icon because that's the purpose that I'm going to use it for. And if ever in the future I will replace it with another one, it would still have to be called install. So that's just the way I would like to work. So renaming it is a fairly useful feature. Okay, so I think we just looked at updating the, li the library so we can get the lifecycle to work. Now, how about adding icons from different sources? Um, there's use cases where uh, the, the Fontello library is not going to be enough. So I have um, a few packages in here, but I'm still missing some stuff. So what if we would like to add our own custom libraries? Well, as it happens, I can do that. Um, but I, I do need the SVG font. Now, I don't have a quick uh, example to show you, but basically most font libraries will also contain an SVG library and you can just drop them onto here and it'll work. It also works for the life cycle. So the icons that I add here will still be available later. Let me show you an example where I did this. Um, so uh, we need fairly different icon libraries for Too Sexy. And one of the problems that we had is here's my example of my ghost icon that was missing in any library. And what I also did is, I mean, I'm using a lot of Font Awesome, but I needed some of the glyph icons because um, there was two or three things like an apple without a bite, which I really needed, that I just got from there. So I got the glyph icons SVG, I dragged it onto here, and now I can use it as well. Um, if I use these, they don't have nice names. They'll just be called glyph. So I'll really have to rename it once I add it. But it's a very practical, useful feature. And as you can see, that's how I got my ghost icon and things like that into here without any big issues. So what else did we want to look at? Naming conflicts. Give your fonts a nice name and give your CSS class a nice name. This is important for this following reason. In this example that you see right here, I'm using it on my very own user interfaces which are in an iframe which have no conflicts whatsoever. So I can call them icon something. But the moment you place it on a DNN page, um, you're going to be running the risk of other icons being in there too. So my in-page icons is a different library. It's much smaller. Oop, that should not have happened. So it's much smaller. And I guess Fontelico is just about to crash here. Okay, so my in-page icons, I only have 30 icons for in-page buttons, but if I would just call them icon okay, chances are DNN is going to have an icon with that name or a different module like, let's say DNN Sharp may have a contact form with icons. We could have a naming conflict. So here I'm giving all my CSS classes the term icon SXC. This way I'm making sure that there's certainly never gonna be another icon with that name. And now I'm going to be able to avoid naming conflicts. So that's how it works. I think I got all the important stuff in. As I just said, there's a really great blog about how to, how to include this. There's another blog about how to upload um, fonts and icon fonts into DNN and a few more. So I'm sure you'll love it. Thank you for watching. Daniel Mettler, Tusic Internet Solutions for the DNN and Too Sexy community.